this house was built in 2000, not your typical 100-year-old farmhouse where you might more normally see an oil-burning furnace, but that's what they had here, and they had a small leak. Affected area is pretty small. Uh, oil leaked out of the furnace onto the filter box, onto the concrete floor, a little bit down the floor drain. Nothing got uh, to any of the walls or framing, and there were no contents affected to speak of either. Um, the biggest challenge with fuel oil cleanup, in my experience, is what's soaked into the concrete. Um, uh, sometimes it can soak in enough or run down cracks enough that we actually have to remove a section of the slab, some of the soil underneath. Um, but at the very least, concrete absorbs this stuff to the point where it makes it difficult to um, completely eradicate all the fuel oil odor that might be lingering down there. As it slowly sort of seeps back up out of the concrete, it just continues to make the air smell like fuel oil. So um, this is the biggest uh, challenge, even if you don't have to jackhammer out part of the slab. Um, often this is going to be the thing that's contributing to um, odor issues in the area. This is the filter box. Um, it looks pretty good now. The homeowners had already cleaned it up a little bit, but it did present a little bit of a special challenge too, um, as you'll see later. This is the old furnace. Inside, pretty contaminated with fuel oil that uh, shouldn't all be in there like that. This is the unit that failed. Um, the part of the furnace has a sensor in it that's supposed to detect when there's a no flame condition. There's no flame, it's supposed to shut off the oil pump so it doesn't keep drawing oil. Um, but that sensor failed, or the switch failed, and just kept, kept keep calling for oil. And uh, that's how things leaked out. This is uh, an air scrubber that I set up right away. Um, the newer Phoenix scrubbers don't have a, a special uh, filter frame for keeping activated carbon in inside the unit, so... I wanted to have activated charcoal for this project going as, as long as possible to help pull fumes out of the air. So what I did is just lay the scrubber down, the intake is facing up, put a spare filter over the top of that, filled up the pleats with activated charcoal, um, and just set it aside running on high uh, immediately so that while I'm doing other cleaning, this is scrubbing the air out uh, for as long as possible. A close up of the activated charcoal. The purple pellets are a mix of activated charcoal and potassium permanganate, um, which basically uh, functions as an indicator. That purple color will start to disappear and fade to a gray or white color as the material absorbs fumes and gases out of the air and becomes loaded. Um, it's just to tell you when the media is spent. So starts out nice and purple like this. As it sits in the air, absorbing stuff, it, it fades uh, to let you know when it's time to change it. Because of this, you keep it uh, tightly sealed in the five-gallon bucket um, so it doesn't just sit to the open air and waste itself. Um, and it's expensive. It's uh, about three bucks a pound, so you want to you know, try and preserve it. First thing I did... Uh, in the affected area was clean up the floor uh, so that I could work in closer to the furnace and other details without tracking stuff all over the place. The homeowners had already gotten up the bulk fluid with um, oil dry and swept that up and out of the way, but there was still um, a definite film uh, on the concrete and then a little bit on the tile, the BCT that you see there as well. Cleaned it up with Atomic mixed one part uh, atomic to three parts water. So in a quart sprayer like that, I put eight ounces of atomic and filled the rest up with hot water. Sprayed everything down, scrubbed it with a nylon bristle brush, and then um, wiped it up with towels. You can see the towel on the left there is the first one I used in this round of cleaning, and the one on the right is the last towel I used. Still pretty dirty, um, but not uh, as dirty as it was at first. Um, just getting the, the bulk, grit, sludge, whatever, off the surface of the concrete. After that, I wanted to soak the concrete down and let a degreaser 
stand on it um, to soak into the concrete as long as, mm, not as long as possible, five, ten minutes um, to try to pull it out uh, to the surface where I could wipe it up. Um, before I did that, I made a little plug for the floor drain by putting a couple gloves on one hand and picking up a wad of towels with that hand and then pulling the gloves off over the towels makes a nice watertight little plug that you can stuff down a pipe like that and that will allow uh, my degreaser to stand especially around uh, the drain pipe there where the fuel oil will have collected too um, and just let it soak in uh, as much as possible without running straight down the drain. Um, after again 5-10 minutes I uh, wiped the rest of that up and you can see the couple towels that uh, I used toward the end there are much cleaner than when I started the whole process. And that's kind of good enough. You want to get as much as possible cleaned up off the surface so you're not tracking around recontaminating things. Um, but you're going to reach a point of diminishing returns, and that's pretty much it right there. That's as clean as that's going to get uh, off the surface. So. Um, some of the closer in details uh, some of the oil got underneath the furnace this is the new furnace fortunately the blocks that it's sitting on are um, movable I was able to pivot them out of the way one at a time and clean the blocks and clean the floor underneath the foot um, which was nice um, it was kind of a break really you can't always do this um, sometimes the furnace is sitting on a solid concrete pad and the only thing you can do is spray cleaner at it and hope for the best uh, unless you want to remove the furnace, which most people don't. So this is the filter box. Uh, the homeowners had already wiped it down some, uh, but uh, it did have uh, oil leak over the top of it and down the, the face and the cover on it and got it to a small degree on the actual filter frame itself. Uh, but this one was a little bit challenging because of how fuel oil can kind of soak into uh, uh, plastic parts too. So this is the uh, the top latch. You can see there's a little bit of fuel oil around the word too. And uh, I sprayed it, wiped it down sprayed it, scrubbed it, wiped it down, and this kept coming back. There's a little bit of fuel oil around this one word. Um, so after a couple times just spraying and immediately wiping, I decided I had to just get uh, sprayed down and let this sit and soak and try to pull some of that out of there. Um, so that's what I did. In the meantime, I went looking for other things that might be just slightly contaminated and to get them clean because uh, all these little little areas can contribute to an odor problem and you just want to make sure you get as much as you can the first time so this is the floor drain as dirty as floor drains will be that right there might have been the difference between this job stinking or not who knows same with the grate it's pretty yucky underneath uh, what's left is just a uh, rust oxidation whatever on the metal um, again just getting all the little things as clean as I can so that I'm doing everything I can to avoid odor issues. Back to the filter box. Um, I finally got it to stay clean. Um, it took probably four or five times of going over this, including a good um, five minute sort of sit and soak time to, to pull all the oil out of here so um, that it would stop doing this. Yeah, this. That was annoying, but I beat it. Underneath that latch, uh, oil hadn't really soaked under there too bad, but it's dirty anyway, so I just cleaned it up. This is the frame for the filter. Um, the insulation on either side is how it sort of seals the ends of the filter pleats. Again, oil didn't get in here too badly, but um, since it's part of the HVAC system, and we're trying to avoid blowing fuel oil fumes all over the house, especially with the new furnace. Um, just wanted to make sure everything was clean, so I wiped that down. Um, as I was tackling this, though, uh, I noticed these, which are the waste baskets that they put the spent oil dry into. So they soaked up all this bulk, bulk fuel oil, 
let the oil dry and then put it in these baskets along with a little piece of insulation from the inside uh, of the cover of the filter box and just left that contaminated stuff sitting there. A little embarrassing that I didn't notice it right away when I was walking through, but I'm glad I found it eventually because this is, you know, two waste baskets full of fuel oil soaked material are definitely contributing to the odor, so I got rid of this stuff. Got the filter frame all clean. Those are the combs that uh, go inside that filter to hold the media, the filter itself apart. Um, just for those of you who may not have run into these, the, the filter media comes as just a big accordion of material. You lock it in on either side of the frame and then those combs go uh, down between the pleats to, to hold them open so it works properly. Um, kind of a pain. I think the record for changing one of these is just under nine hours or so, give or take. Um, a real joy, but that's what that's about for those of you who may, may not have seen that before. After everything was cleaned with uh, atomic degreaser, I cleaned everything else with uh, this. This is uh, the franchisor's private label enzyme cleaner or enzyme digester. You can see, see it's labeled for organic odors, pet stains, etc. Not specifically labeled to um, break down and clean up fuel oil, but it worked very well. Um, and uh, as a side note, it smells exactly like Liquid Alive, which is another enzyme cleaner that some of you may have used. Um, I think it's the same stuff. Um, the only difference being I didn't notice that uh, the fragrance from this didn't... Uh, linger so long as the liquid alive we've had some some problems with that uh, that fragrance being present for days or weeks after we're done um this is stuff is ready to use it's uh live bacteria cultures that attack and break down um, organic material including hydrocarbons found in fuel oil apparently because this again it's worked pretty well so you just pour it over the whole area again i got the four drain plugged up, all the other components, filter box, etc. that I cleaned earlier, I went over again with this stuff just to make sure, but then doused the concrete and just let it soak, agitated it a little bit with a bristle brush, and um, topped it off, so to speak. I poured a little bit more on there just to wet everything down as thoroughly as I could. And then I covered it with plastic, um, the idea being that this stuff has to stay wet uh, in order to eat. Um, so you want to cover it up with plastic so it stays wet as long as possible. And uh, move my air scrubber and uh, filter over there closer to the source area. And that's pretty much how I left it for the weekend. Um, just covered with plastic. The furnace guy still had work to do in this area. So I reminded him not to trip on a bag and kill himself. Um, things like that, but that was it. Um, just just left it like that to run for the weekend and uh, told the missus I'd come back and, and see what we had the following week. Making sure that I cut a little hole in the plastic for the floor drain so all the condensate lines and things like that could drain properly into it. Next week, came back. Um, I spoke to the lady of the house on the phone. She said it smelled great down there. Um, which was encouraging. The job was an hour and a half away, so I was glad to hear that it sounded like we were going to win in one go. I didn't have to keep trekking out here. But you can see the concrete floor is still uh, plenty wet. This is just after I pulled the garbage bags up, and that's what we want. We want it as wet as possible so it can eat uh, effectively as long as possible. And it didn't smell. Um, I was real happy with it. It worked out, worked out really well. This is the activated charcoal um, that is now used up. You can see that all the purples have pretty much um, turned to a gray or whitish color. And again, this is just, if uh, we are going to continue working on this job and I wanted to have activated charcoal as part of that um, deodorization strategy, I would have changed it at this point. This stuff is basically done. So I would have put uh, dumped that out and put fresh um, media in the top of that filter used to look like this, and now it's done. Uh, 
this is all I smell now, is the cat box. Um, no fuel oil smell whatsoever, so we won this one, and I guess uh, that's an upgrade for some people. No fuel oil, just the smell of cat waste. Um, teach his own, I suppose. Just wanted to include a few quick pictures of a job that had more finishes involved. This is a different job. Um, but uh, you can see that it's very similar to a sewer damage carpet pad, drywall, uh, trim, even in this case, the framing, all affected to the point where um, you just have to get rid of it. There's no effective way to clean that carpet or pad, um, drywall, and even the framing was just too saturated, some of those pieces. Um, it just wasn't going to be possible, mostly from an odor standpoint, to get things fixed up entirely, so those ended up being removed. Not a huge area. Um, but it's a lot of work um, to, to get this to a point where um, it's ready to be put back together and it doesn't smell anymore. Um, even with this small amount of uh, finish, there was, there was quite a bit of effort in this to get this uh, taken care of. So this picture shows a couple of things that I would do differently now. job uh, was from a couple years ago. Um, that is enzyme digester on the floor. I didn't cover it with plastic. Um, my thinking at the time was that the concrete would wet, soak in enough, um, that the natural moisture that's present in the concrete slab anyway would would be enough to sustain bacteria or whatever that are um, that are breaking down the fuel oil. Um, and I think that was probably a mistake. Um, I should have covered it up plastic to stay as wet as possible. And at the very least, I shouldn't have had a fan blasting across it. Um, the idea of that fan and that the hydroxyl generator hooked up to the fan um, is we're just trying to blast that odor um, directly with the hydroxyl generator. Um, to be honest, I don't think it did much, the hydroxyl generator. Um, it certainly knocked the odor down while it was running, but a minute or two after you shut it off, sort of all the lingering... Uh, fuel oil smell would just come back, and we ended up treating this house with ozone for a couple days to get the odor back down to an acceptable level. It's one of these older homes uh, that always has a little bit of a whiff of fuel oil in the basement, but um, it was a little worse than it, it normally would be, so ozone was the ticket to getting that, that residual odor acceptable. Um, the hydroxyl generator just plain uh, wasn't effective, not the tool for the job. Um, these are just some basics. Uh, it's not rocket science. Mostly it involves uh, cleaning, you know, removing the source of the odor as thoroughly as possible. And um, the, the charcoal filter in the air scrubber um, does help tremendously just to, to take fumes out of the air and uh, hopefully prevent them from settling or wicking into other materials uh, in the area. It can be a tricky one to deodorize, but it is possible to win.